You can't afford to not be good at this. You're dependent on your job as a leader to get other people to take actions. You need to be skilled in relationships, in influence, and communication. There's no getting around it. So it gets labeled as soft skills, but it's really a hard business driver. And there's hard science underneath it that we understand how it works. So it's not just soft, it's a critical piece of being an effective communicator. People talk about executive presence or having a presence, and most people think it's something that you're born with or that person just has. It turns out it's just a set of behaviors and presence is something that you do. There's a set of behaviors that I like to encapsulate down to about five points on either side of that equation. On the authoritative side, there is slowness in how you move and how you speak, stillness, just being very still like right now and not moving my head very much at all. That's a choice. Normally I have a little bit more mo motion in, in me, so uh, stillness. Silence is very powerful and if you can be comfortable in silence, then you can use that to be more authoritative. Symmetry has to do with, do I slant a little or does my head go off to the side? I would say this is a little less authoritative than what this is. And then space. What space do you own? And can I reach out and touch someone's shoulder or shake their hand and make that first move to invade their space? Those are all on the authoritative side. So on the other side with approachable, there are five Fs. And that is filling space. If you can't let a silence happen, that's more approachable. If you speak or move fast, you're usually trying to get all your words in before you get interrupted, that's not a place of power. You know that you don't have the control to talk, so you try to get everything in all in one space. The next one is folded, and that's where you're folding your body, like crossing your arms, crossing your legs, is all a way of sort of protecting yourself and, and closing in it's a little more approachable. And even just that sort of twisting on one foot or crossing one leg over the other is a little closer together. And it's related to fidgeting. So if you do that and the motion keeps happening, that also gets very close to what flirting is. And there's a lot of little gestures and motions that we do that are flirting, including making and breaking eye contact is more flirtatious. And the last one is about giving space. You allow people into your space. You uh, invite people to take your space. So those are all of the characteristics of being on the approachable side. The first thing is awareness, and you have that if you're asking the question. And the second thing is to just look at yourself. Just start to observe, how do I act in different situations and how do other people act. Often I talk to students and they want some coaching because they're ready for a promotion. They want to move up into that partner position or into the next level. And I always tell them to observe and report on how do those people act, behave, verbally, non-verbally, because you need to act in that same way. And what got you to where you are isn't what will get you to the next stage, but you have a perfect opportunity to just observe. So that's the first place. And the second place is to try and make some change, any change, and practice it. Improvisational acting or any acting class from community theater to a professional school hones and works on these tools. They're also really fun to do. It's a fun place to play and many people are afraid of going to do it and those classes are some of the safest place in the world because to do that work you have to create a really safe space for people to take some risks and try to show up in different ways than they normally are. So they're 
people are very skilled and the groups that are there are very supportive. So uh, in most cases, people come in a little afraid and leave just elated because it's so much fun. It starts with the fact that acting is not pretending. Most people think it is. And if you see actors that are not great in film and TV, they are the ones that are pretending. Acting is about finding a truthful place. So when you see a really good actor, you're seeing how would that person actually show up in that setting. So if it's a dangerous setting and uh, scary things are happening, you're seeing that person react in, in the way they show up as a scared person. And when we see that, it's really believable because it's authentic. Authentic means in tune with the emotional state that you're actually in and not something separate. So an example of that would be, if I try to put on mad for you, I think this doesn't really look mad. Right? It it's, looks kind of cartoonish. It's, it's like when you ask a small child to show me your mad face, it's not really mad. It's a mask that they're putting on. When you're really authentically mad, you show up in a way that it's clear you're communicating that emotion. That's what authentic is. Everyone can be authentically authoritative or authentically approachable anywhere along this range. They will do it slightly differently. My authentic authority, my authentic powerful is different than yours, which is different than everyone else that is out there. But it's truthful, and if it's truthful, then we believe it, and it's really part of you. So acting is not about putting on the mask or the costume or the character. It's about finding the truthful place and bringing that out. Before you walk into the room, you can put on these gestures and these poses. You can do it by yourself. You can go to the restroom and do it. You can do it in the elevator on the way up or around the corner, expanding your body, saying your speech or a few lines to yourself using the slow and low tones and if that's how you want to show up. And by doing that preparation, it changes you inside and it will carry over into the meeting and that sets you up for success. You can start that before you leave the house. So I have a couple of playlists that are like, ultimate epic movie soundtracks that are the important themes from superhero movies. And I start listening to that. And I know what's going on. I know I am tricking myself, and it still works every time. And I laugh at myself, noticing that it's working, and then I really feel the emotions. And so today, I had a lecture. Before I came in on the car, I was listening to that music. And behind the scenes, backstage, before I stepped out onto the stage, I had the music on, and I raised my arms. I'm in the back in the green room. Nobody's around. And even if they are, I, I don't care. But uh, using all those techniques to get my body ready to think about how good it's going to go. And then I walk on stage very confident, full of the way I want to show up. Once you know, if you're aware enough to notice it's going on in you, you are aware enough to then make a change. And if it's going poorly, almost any change you make will make it better. If you notice that you're babbling a little and you're going on too much or talking too fast, as soon as you do, stop and take a pause. Take a breath, get a drink of water. Even say, just a second, I want to check my notes on this before I continue and make them wait. And it gives you a chance to breathe and to stop and to reset. So you can do that at any point. From boardrooms to audiences and theaters, they all are the same. There is a piece of them that will allow for you to be a human being and to show up in that way. And even in an aggressive negotiation meeting, with someone, they'll allow for you to show up and stop and pause and recover. It will not stop the meeting. It feels that way sometimes, but I think you can always stop and reset. 
if I just start smiling a little more, you're going to start smiling. And we're going to start mirroring back and forth. And if I stop doing it, it will pull you a little that way. You can watch in any room the wave of crossed legs and uncrossed legs happen as we all get in sync and resonance. So we are always act, reacting to each other. And the reality is we're all improvising our days. That's why it's also a really useful tool because nobody gets up and gets a script. Well, actors do, but nobody gets a script for their day. We are all making it up all the time. We are all reacting to everything that's going on. I think what we're talking about in the work that I do is being more aware of it, being more comfortable to make more choices, reading the room and making choices about how we want to react when it's important, when it's meaningful, and when we want to do it in service of others.